You know, when you first load up the PS Portal, the first thing you notice is the amazing screen. The colors just pop out and it looks vibrant and it's a lot bigger than some of the other competitors out there and it just amazes you. Form factor is wonderful, it's so light and the controllers are just a joy in the hands because it is essentially a DualSense controller chopped in half. There was obviously some skepticism because it is just a streaming device. I mean, what can it do that your iPhone or iPad or tablet can't already do? I mean, I know when I use remote play on iPhone, it tends to get a bit blocky and then the connection drops. I haven't had any of that with the PS Portal. It's just been fantastic. There are a few frames missing here and there, which a Reddit user did point out is software related. Sony haven't released an update for this, but generally it is stable. You will very, very rarely find any gameplay blocky, even if you're in another part of the house. Now, I'm actually playing in a different room to my router. I've got a wired setup. It is Wi-Fi 6, but I don't believe that will matter in this case. The more you use a device, however, the more you notice its flaws. Now, the positives I've stated obviously with the hardware itself, uh, the picture is less blocky, but in terms of disadvantages, I did notice a slight delay in audio. Sometimes I would notice it in response. Now, with input lag itself, I don't play it online competitively, so I haven't got a real bother with this, to be honest. I did notice an audio delay with Streets of Rage. As soon as I struck or did some sort of move, it would almost come or a few milliseconds later, just enough for me to notice. Anyone who's probably tired and just looking for a quick game probably won't notice it, but it did bother me. I had to restart the portal's connection. Then it reduced. It was still there, but not as bad as before. But I'm finding if there are any issues, I have to restart my connection, restart the PlayStation, or just wait until somebody else has stopped streaming something in the house because that has an impact also. I think that's another thing to point out, your internet speed, although you need a minimum amount, once you have over that, it doesn't really matter how fast it is, it does matter on your router. If you've got a standard one from your internet service provider, they're okay. If you've got multiple other people downloading and streaming stuff, you're going to notice an, a drop in image quality. The image quality coming out was brilliant. It does come at 1080p, so only 4K games literally get um, squashed and compressed and you can see some artifacts um, and banding particularly around gray or black areas another thing the playstation portal does not do very well is hdr as you can see in this scene it just completely just increases the white color and it just it doesn't look great but if you're looking again for a quick game that shouldn't be an issue it's varied in terms of certain games. Spider-Man 2 performs wonderfully. I might then play the Crew Motorfest and that won't do too great. 2D games come out really, really well in this. I have had an issue with Kingdom Come Deliverance where that just looks completely like you've put Vaseline over the screen in some parts and it's just, it's really erratic. And according to some Reddit users, uh, there are some games that don't actually work. I haven't checked this myself because I don't have those games, I think. At one of the Dragon Ball Xenoverse games don't work apparently, but it's not something I've come across yet. Now this PS Portal did actually take me away from my Steam Deck for a little bit, particularly when for some of the games that I have already on PS5 because I get PS5 graphics. For instance, Spider-Man 2, obviously it's not on PC yet, but I get the full quality of that. If I just put the portal a bit further away from my face, I won't notice a lot of the banding issues or maybe a lot of the blurriness that comes with internet streaming. If you're used to cloud gaming, this isn't going to be an issue with you. If you're expecting a device to fully display every single thing that is on your TV, don't. There's a reason why this is only £200. It's not going to do any of that. You want any of that, you need to stay at your TV or get a gaming PC, to be honest. Battery life is just fantastic compared to my Steam Deck and obviously there's no fan noise, it's just wonderful. I find myself coming back to this instead of my Steam Deck. And sometimes I do have games on the PlayStation and on PC as well, but I'm finding I'm coming back to this now because I get the visuals as well. Anyone who's played Spider-Man 2 on remote play will know it looks fantastic. You do get a few banding issues, compression issues, but it's not that bad once you actually get into the game itself. It seems that the most appreciative market of this is dads or anybody with children uh, like myself and I'm finding a huge use for that. If you don't have competition over the TV, I, I don't think this device is for you. It is quite nice to use out and about the house uh, in terms of outside of the house. I haven't tried it, but some people have reported that it is working. 
If Sony releases a patch to fix some of the frame rate skipping issues, then this device will be one of the best out there. Honestly, it is amazing. I don't regret the purchase. I actually pre-ordered it only four weeks before release, but I was quite fortunate to get a hold of one. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments be below. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. But yeah, this is definitely a device I would recommend if you can't always use the TV or if you're looking up to pick and play, it is just handy. But yeah, until next time.